busy. And then. And then this. I would say establishment media do not like to hear what Mr. Hirsch has to say. They did not like it when he revealed the massacre at Mai Lai in Vietnam. They didn't like many of his other stories, uh, and they turned out to be true. Sometimes you have to wait a while. But meanwhile, you look at the credibility of that reporter, against the credibility of those who criticize him. And on this case, Cy Hirsch wins hands down. This person has a wealth of detail, a wealth of knowledge, and uh, just an incredible uh, entree into exactly how this operation was conducted, uh, that the substance of it is entirely Well, I worked in the intelligence community for almost 30 years, uh, so it's a little embarrassing for me to, to say that the public relations people, uh, the spokespersons for the CIA, do not have a very good record for credibility. What did those Western journalists do when someone leaked the transcript of that debriefing? They went to the CIA spokesperson. Here's the debriefing. It says there aren't. They were destroyed. And the CIA spokesperson said, that's untrue. That's bogus. Don't be misled. And those Western journalists said, oh, boy. <laughs> thanks for telling us because we were going to report all that. Almost a month before the attack on Iraq, the press suppressed the story, and so most Americans believed, and I dare say most still believe, that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and they don't know that they were lied to. That's a terrible lesson, but that could be what's happening right now as well with respect to Seymour Hersh's story. And then And then
von der Leyen said, oh, we need a proper investigation and we need to, to deal with, with the culprit. But all of a sudden she went quiet. And she, now the, the Europeans don't want to know who did it because they obviously uh, suspect that the Americans uh, may have had an involvement in it. Mm. The idea that they'll blow up their own pipe, uh, nobody uh, of right mind uh, would believe that. But that was the idea spun by mainstream media who uh, unfortunately are part of the problem and not part of the solution. Uh, so the idea was given out, oh the Russians did it, the Russians did it. If the Russians wanted to stop gas flowing through the pipes t uh, from Russia to Europe, all they have to do is turn off the tap. They wouldn't have to blow it up. Uh, so, obviously, Seymour Hersh, who's a, a brilliant investigative journalist in America, has now done a story saying that the US did it. If the Americans are responsible for blowing up the pipe, it's a serious act of terrorism. Now, it was also an act of environmental terrorism because it was uh, the single largest emission of methane ever recorded in the world. The single largest emission of methane. This is terrible. This is environmental terrorism. And if America thinks it can uh, wipe out, uh, destroy critical European infrastructure, and, uh, and not be held to account for it, well, I mean, international law is dead. Blowing up the Gazprom uh, Bexley pipeline is a violation of international law, as the UN Security Council highlighted. And the findings uh, by the US journalists that uh, this was an act of terrorism by US uh, collaborating with the EU countries uh, shows that the West is escalating the conflict in Ukraine through unconventional means, making it uh, a kind of a hybrid, a hybrid war. Uh, the conclusion that the, um, the U.S. was involved means it also wants to economically benefit by becoming a major energy supplier to Europe. The West remains silent in this because it is part of NATO's strategy to cripple Russia's, uh, uh, Russia economically.